Hello everybody, my name is Joshua and I'd like to welcome you back to another episode of Coffee, Cats and King. Where we discuss books, both new and old. I will share with you pictures of my cats, will make you wish they were your cats. And I will drink enough coffee for me and everybody watching. Uh, sorry about the slurping there guys, I decided to make some iced coffee today. It's uh, sitting somewhere in the 90s, so I think that's justified. Today I would like to talk to you about two very different books. This book, which has an awesome cover and some absolutely egregious writing. And this book, which has possibly one of the worst covers and worst step back art that I know of but also has some of the most bizarre, unique, strange, compelling writing in a horror novel that I've read in a very, very long time. So, I'm going to start off with this guy because I want to start the video on a positive note. So, The Playground by T.M. Wright. I picked this up for $4 on eBay. I'd never heard of T.M. Wright. And I thought, you know what, this cover is terrible, but for $4 I'll give it a read. And within the first 20 pages, I wanted to put it down. I wanted to DNF it because um, it was just, it felt like really bad writing. Honestly, it did. Uh, but what stopped me was this little thing right here on the front cover. It's a little quote from Mr. Stephen King that says, a rare and blazing talent, one of the most original and promising writers of the surreal and macabre. So I thought surely if Stephen King reads this book and thinks that of Mr. T.M. Wright, I need to continue to give him a chance. Um, is that unfair? Maybe a little bit because uh, had that not been there, I probably would not have continued this book. That said, I'm glad I did. Despite the writing being so off-putting, uh, not even just at the beginning, but all through the book, uh, it is a compelling read. So, what is it about? Well, the playground is about this little town called Goods Crossing. The only people who live there are psychics and people who claim to be able to uh, tell the future and people who claim to have, uh, you know, telepathic abilities. So the book starts off with a man who is supposed to go to Goods Crossing and fix the telephone lines. Um, and there's this really weird scene where you can't tell if he's just having a breakdown, uh, but there are all these other voices that are coming in and talking, and I really wasn't sure if it was supposed to be him having a breakdown, if it was ghosts, you know, living in Goods Crossing. Um, I just didn't know what was going on. It was so weird and didn't make any sense. Uh, and like I said, that was the point where I really just wanted to give up on the book already because I was getting no enjoyment out of it. Uh, but I continued on and it continued to be strange and bizarre. And I think what throws me off so much about this book is, uh, like I said, the writing style is just so odd. You have all the main characters, all these main players uh, in Goods Crossing, and at the beginning, we get a little backstory on them to show uh, what makes each of these individuals special, what gives them a place in Goods Crossing with the other psychics and mystics. And uh, even those parts, they're just very odd and off-putting. And the whole book, you get a sense that, uh, that there's so much going on that you don't know about. Um, you know, everyone seems to have these, uh, these, these ghosts, uh, most often literally, that sort of follow them around and plague their lives. And uh, so it's very weird to, you know, have this conversation between, between two people and then, you know, on the same page, they're also having these internal monologues with these things that are haunting them from the past. And, um, like I said, it is very, it's very off-putting, very confusing at times. Um, and it, I just kept reading because it was nothing I had encountered before. 
I would just suggest that maybe you try and pick it up yourself and you will, you will understand uh, within the first 50 pages, you will very much understand. So the story itself, like I said, is about Goods Crossing. We get an introduction to the main, the, the, the main players there, the people who really control the town. Um, and rather soon in, uh, there is a horrible accident during a storm. And this bus, of, of this bus full of school children, explodes. It kills all the children, kills everyone involved. Um, and it happens just outside of Goods Crossing. Well, the matriarch of Goods Crossing decides that her and the other wonderful citizens there are going to do this ritual and resurrect the dead children. Bring them back because they left too early and they deserve life. And so at this point you might be thinking, okay, so it's about creepy ghost children haunting these people and causing mischief. No, it's not. It is more about the ghosts of their pasts coming back to haunt them and really just the showing that uh, these people, while they believe they can control and manipulate and defeat death, uh, they are very much mistaken. So. It was a very compelling read, very interesting. I gave it four stars because it is rather confusing and it is most definitely not going to work out for everyone. Uh, there's going to be a very specific type of person that will get through this book and actually enjoy it. I did not think it was going to be me. It took much longer than those first 20 pages. It took longer than those first 50 pages. But by then, uh, the intrigue, the interest started building and I started realizing that maybe there was something here. Um, and I'm very glad that I stuck with it. I am. So, TM writes, The Playground. Four stars, terrible cover. Give it a read if you want something, if, if you want to experience a different style of writing than you've probably ever read before. I am going to get a nice big gulp of coffee before I start on this next one. I've talked about this a couple times. I've mentioned it a couple times now because this book really made me mad. It's Panzer Spirit by Tom Townsend. <sighs> Panzer Spirit. I went into this book with the knowledge, or the supposed knowledge, that Panzer Spirit was about a ghost Nazi panzer tank that comes back and starts haunting and killing people. There's no Nazis involved, just the tank. Um, and it was also kind of billed to me more as a more as an historical fiction rather than a horror, um, and it just sounded so intriguing, so interesting. I had to buy it. Uh, I told all you wonderful people about it, and some of you bought it, and I apologize for that now. A few things made me really mad about this book, and I'm going to try not to spoil the story in any way. Uh, because some of you are probably still going to want to read this, despite me telling you not to, Juan. Um, <laughs> so, the things I did not like about this book. Tom Townsend um, is actually a fairly decent writer in ways. Um... Not in regards to characterization, okay? So, so what bothered me so much about this book that I had to give it one star and I had to make it this big to do? Well, um, a, a lot of things did, okay? So you have all these people who are who are experts on tanks, okay? That, you know, they've went to school, they've studied, they've been in the military for years and years and years. And their specialty is tanks, okay? One man is in charge of a tank museum. He, uh, he's ex-military, he's got like 20, 30 years of service in the military, and he runs the National Tank Museum, okay? The other guy is also ex-military, and he, um, he wrote the definitive book about tanks and the history of tanks, okay? So... These people should know what they're doing. Uh, 
Well, right off the bat, at the beginning of the book, um, a squadron, platoon, whatever you'd like to call them, uh, these military guys are, are doing tank training, okay? So again, they know what they're doing. Um, and this Nazi panzer tank blows them all up, okay? Um, and it does so due to their own stupidity. Uh, they do not approach it with caution. One of the men tries to climb in it. Um, and, I, you know, I have to think that there's some sort of protocol when you find an old, abandoned World War II tank. And these guys most certainly did not follow it. So the fact that they died does not bother me, okay? I think it is ridiculous that a group of individuals who work for the military and who have specialized in tank training would be killed by a tank because they don't know the first thing about how to handle it, okay? All right, now, I said I wasn't gonna do spoilers. There aren't gonna be some spoilers here, so bear with me. Uh, the guy at the museum, again, expert on these things. He gets run over by the tank uh, because it starts to move and he questions how it can move. So he climbs on top of it and the tank knocks him off and rolls him over slowly. Uh, kind of like that ridiculous scene from Austin Powers when the guy gets run over. Again, how? Why? This man who has 30 years of experience and who runs a friggin' tank museum doesn't know the first thing about using caution when being around a tank. They already know that it's killed people somehow and that it's malfunctioning in some way, even if there's nothing supernatural or weird going on, okay? Um, oh, and now we get to that part. Now we get to that part. So, you know how I said that this is a, uh, this is the spirit or ghost of a Nazi panzer tank? Well, well it's not, okay? Um, it's not. This next part, I can't even believe I'm going to say it. So, one female character in this book. She is an immense help, and they probably never would have figured out what the heck was going on without her. In fact, she is absolutely essential to them figuring this thing out and beating it. Despite that, every male character in the book, which is every other character because she's the only female, every male character refers to her as the crazy lady, the bimbo, the skank, okay? You see where I'm going with this? Uh, the main character who spends a bunch of time with her still can't seem to remember her name every time he talks about her. The bimbo, the bimbo, the bimbo, the bimbo, okay? We get it, Tom Townsend. You don't like women, okay? Move on from it. And I could say it was the one character, but it wasn't because every male character referred to her in this same way. Um, all he did was sexualize her, despite the fact that he that she is described almost as looking like a child. Um, so we're not even going to go into all that, okay? She is essential to this because she writes fantasy comic books. Uh, and specifically, her design of an elf is found on the side of this Nazi panzer tank that is killing people. Um, and you might say, well, how are these things connected? Well, I, I, I was kind of curious too, and then I got my answer, and I wanted to rip my hair out. Uh, they are connected because, according to this story, during World War II, the Nazis discovered a secret way of using a special type of metal that only elves know about and only elves use, and they were able to use this metal to build this tank and it in, and it imbued this tank with magic magic that is, that allows it to run on its own and to kill on its own and to be indestructible and unstoppable and who cares because we're now talking about a tank run by elven magic and as ridiculous as this whole book sounded in the beginning if that does not just completely throw you off, then uh, I, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. 
Um, any interest I had in this book was lost at that point. And honestly, there was very little interest left because uh, I'd already listened to 100 pages of someone being killed by the tank and them saying, well, how could it have happened? What happened? Oh, I don't know what happened. And then someone else dies from the tank and they say, oh, I don't understand. It's just the tank. It can't do anything. But you know what? I think by the time the tank ra racks up 10 kills, you should probably start questioning whether this is a normal tank or not and whether maybe it needs to be put away so someone else can't get hurt. So, there is so much more that I could complain about with this stupid freaking book. But I'm not going to, okay? I think I've said enough. I've said my piece. Uh, hopefully I have sold you on not buying this book, on not... Uh, on not reading this book. If I have not, uh, please tell me in the comments below, okay? Don't spend money on this book. Let me send you this copy. One, because I don't want it at my house anymore. And two, because I don't want you to use your hard-earned money to buy this piece of crap. So, I expect to see this sometime in the future, by the way, when I talk about my worst books of 2021. Expect to see me talk about this again one day when I buy something else from TM Wright and I talk about what a unique and interesting person he is. And that is my book review times two for the day. Uh, now that I'm good and ticked off and uh, fueled by far too much coffee because this is cup number, I don't know, eight or nine today. Um, I am going to go get some of this uh, negative angry energy out from Panzer Spirit. Uh, probably chop a tree down or something, you know? So I'm going to get off of here. Uh, you guys have a great day. I do not want to leave you in a bad mood, so I'm going to offer up some cat footage now. Get that mousey. You get that mousey. He's not even looking at the camera. He's looking back there. Oh, really? Oh, Judas Priest. Havoc, you want to do something cute, buddy? Really? Hey, you want a straw? You want a straw? Come get your straw. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. And there you have it. Have a wonderful day. Don't read Panzer Spirit. Do read something by TM Wright. Stay safe. And uh, watch out for those magic Nazi tanks. Cheers, I guess. <laughs>